Hey everyone, welcome back here to Weather on the Go. All your weather coverage on this Thursday, September 11th, 2025. My name is Hunter and in this video, we are gonna be talking about an Omega blocking pattern developing across North America and what that means for our temperatures as we see a much warmer temperature pattern across North America heading into the middle of September. We're also going to be looking at an increasing risk for severe weather later this week and into the weekend with damaging winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes possible and the full tropical weather update at the end of the video. So stick around as some interesting developments are taking place in the tropics and both the Pacific and the Atlantic basins that we'll touch on in this video. Also, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channels. We have daily weather forecast breakdowns across southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics. Like the video, giving it a thumbs up, and share it with a friend, a family member, and on social media. So without further ado, let's take you out to North America and show you the big picture here. And you can see in orange, that is your ridge of high pressure, and that's in the middle here, and starting to build across the plains up into the southern Canadian prairies. On either side of that, to the east, on the eastern seaboard, Board. We have a low pressure trough that dives down there across the mid Atlantic, and we have a stronger trough diving into California and Nevada across the desert southwest and the west coast. This is an omega blocking pattern, and why it's called that is because it has the Greek letter omega here, and you can see that as we have the trough across the west, you got the ridge in between, and then you have a trough across the east here, giving you that Greek uh, omega look. Now, looking at those temperatures underneath of that ridge, we're going to be warming up here and stepping those temperatures up each day into the weekend. So for this afternoon, we're going to be into the upper 80s to mid 90s all the way up here into Kansas, Missouri, Southern Illinois. We're still hanging on to 60s and 70s for highs across areas up to the north into the Midwest. So Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and over into the Northeast this afternoon. We'll take another step up in our temperatures as we go into tomorrow on Friday, September 12th. 90 degree line shifts further north, say 91 in Des Moines, 92 in Omaha, and 93 into Kansas City. Same thing over there in St. Louis on Friday. Saturday, September 13th, we got mid 90s now in Des Moines and 95, 96 in St. Louis, getting close to 90 at 87 on the lakefront there in Chicago. And we're going to be warming up into the mid 80s for the Twin Cities as well. And then that will continue as we go into Sunday, September 14th. Notice the cooler air that starts to impinge on the Northwestern Plains as we go toward the end of the weekend on Sunday. That's as some rain cooled air will be bringing us uh, the temperatures down into the 70s and 80s across the North Central Plains from the Dakotas into Nebraska and into Kansas. That rain cool air could come at a cost of some severe weather as we go as soon as this afternoon and this evening on your Thursday, September 11th here. We do have a slight risk of severe weather, a two out of five on the risk scale in yellow stretching from southeastern Montana into western North Dakota. Large area in dark green, that is where isolated severe thunderstorm coverage will be possible. And notice closer to the low pressure system up there into the U.S. Canadian border, that's where the more organized thunderstorms will be. That's where that slight risk is. The further south and west you trend towards the Rockies into Colorado, the more isolated that storm coverage will be this afternoon and this evening. Damaging winds, large hail should be the main risk. The tornado threat is quite low. And and then as we go into tomorrow on Friday, September 12th, 2025, notice we got more isolated severe weather from Montana eastward into the Dakotas into northern Wyoming and another area down into the Four Corners region. So we're talking western Colorado, northwestern New Mexico, getting into Arizona and parts of southeastern Utah. Again, isolated severe thunderstorms will be the coverage. This is not going to be a widespread severe weather outbreak, but damaging winds and large hail on each of these days will likely be the main mode of severe weather. An isolated tornado or two will also be possible. And then once we go into the start of the weekend on Saturday, September 13th, 2025, notice we have more isolated severe weather, although further south into Colorado, New Mexico, and into portions of the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle there on Saturday. And you can see those storms starting to ignite across the Western Plains on that day as well, especially the afternoon and the evening. Overall, rainfall amounts through 7 a.m. on Monday, uh, September 15th through the midway of the month. Notice we got some heavier pockets of rain here, an inch or two. There will be some areas that get skipped out on and get only maybe a quarter inch or less. There'll be other areas, again, that see around two inches of rainfall. So it's kind of a hit or miss variety as we go through the weekend ahead. 
Let's look at next week, right? This is the third week of September, Monday, September 15th through Friday, September 19th. Big ridge of high pressure in orange building all the way up here into Canada. And we see a little bit lower pressure down here near the Gulf Coast. Now, synoptically, this is a look for a warmer third week of September across the Canadian prairies and all the way down through the Mississippi Valley here with a continuation of our warmth, maybe not as warm as this weekend, but still pretty warm as we go through at least the middle portion of next week. Now, this will come at a cost for some precipitation up there across the upper Midwest and plains as we go through next week, especially mid to late week as a cold front drops south out of Canada and that will try to bring some cooler air down but again it is going to bring some more chances of showers and storms some of these chances could be severe across Minnesota down here into Iowa into the eastern Dakotas into Nebraska and Kansas and a little bit more isolated the further south you go into Oklahoma and Texas now as we look up here into Alaska yes we have snowfall falling here over the next few days going into next week and this will be piling up in the higher elevation. Several feet are expected across southern and southeastern Alaska into southwestern Yukon, even northwestern British Columbia, Canada, starting to see quite a bit of snowfall in the higher elevations. And that just gives you a reminder that winter is just around the corner here, not only just for Canada, but for the United States as well. We're only a couple months away, believe it or not. Now, as we look at the last week of September, we got a big trough up here across Nova Scotia, New Finland and eastern Quebec in the eastern Atlantic uh, Canada here and we got a big ridge over the top there over into portions of uh, the Hudson Bay in Canada. Underneath, we're going to attempt to see some lower pressure develop that will bring a cold front likely across the United States again going into the last week of September and that will eat up some of the warmth but bring precipitation and heavier precipitation a little bit further to the south. So now we're talking again, the central plains, the Midwest into the Ohio Valley, and then perhaps even the Northeast getting that. A little bit drier look for the southern plains into the southeast, including Florida, as we go into the last week there of September. Now the storm track is gonna start up here in the Pacific Northwest. It's gonna dive southeast toward Kansas and Oklahoma, and then lift up over there toward the Mid-Atlantic or the I-95 corridor to the north of that track. That's where a lot of the precipitation will be as we go into the last week there of September going through September 30th. Now let's turn over and talk about the full tropical weather update here. The peak of hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin was yesterday, so we are just past the peak of hurricane season by one day. We are still at a time where we could see some pretty significant storm systems in the Atlantic Basin. In fact, the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida has a low 30% chance of development in the main development region off the Cape Verde Islands of Africa. Africa and moving westward over the next seven days. But notice it doesn't touch land by day seven. That's as far west in the western side of this cone. But what it does do is lead into warmer waters as we go into next week. So as the system potentially gets more organized, that tropical wave is going to get into more of a thermodynamic and favorable environment here into the western main development region. And then if it continues westward into the southwest Atlantic, perhaps, that will be some trouble as we could see rapid intensification, much like Aaron did just a few weeks ago. And notice we are well above the historical average or well above normal, a pace where we should be for our warm water temperatures here into the southwest Atlantic. So there's no surprise there are the system will have some legs with it as we go into the third week of September and you can see ensemble probabilities over 90%. So even though the National Hurricane Center has 30%, I do feel that this is going to be increasing in probability here numerically as we go into next week. So that will be something to keep an eye on. The Climate Prediction Center's extended tropical hazards outlook does show that into the eastern portions of the main development region, trending into the central, eventually the western main development region, but then thereafter, maybe a little bit more shear starts to work with these systems, starts to shear them apart. That could be our hope. We don't want a system for sure to go into the Caribbean because if it does, it is a hot tub down there right now. No systems have really pushed into the Caribbean this season, and that means it is in a pristine environment for if any system gets in there, it could uh, really start to rapidly intensify. Now, as we go into the last week of September, maybe some systems trying to develop in the Western Caribbean near the Yucatan and then into the Southern Gulf. That will be something to watch as we go toward the 24th through the 30th of the month of September. 
Into the East Pacific Basin we go, 90% chance of development here over the next seven days near the coast of Mexico, and there are some ensembles by this weekend on Sunday, September 14th that do show some stronger members here, even Category 2, even 3 members here, 974 millibars, 982, 999, 1,000, so... There are a lot of members starting to show up and even look at a 961 here developing toward the middle of next week. So a formidable tropical cyclone, perhaps a major hurricane is not out of the realm of possibility in the East Pacific near Mexico or the Baja as we go into the middle of next week by Wednesday, September 17th. And again, it is in a pretty pristine environment where we see a lot of warm water temperatures near the coast of Mexico. The closer it gets to the coast, those shelf waters are quite warm and they are well well above the average here where we should be for the early portion, even middle portion of September. Now looking here at the East Pacific, while it does look very active here over the next seven to 10 days, by the time we get towards the last week or so of September, the East Pacific starts to quiet down a little bit and trending a little bit more towards the Atlantic, just kind of with the MJO, the Madden-Julian Oscillation and its progression favors more of the Atlantic once we get into late September. Now, thank you all for watching. If you are not a subscriber to my YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe. We are going to be doing daily weather forecasts across the United States, Southern Canada, and the tropics daily here on the channel. So to stay updated on the future weather forecasts, make sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you turn on post notification bell so you're notified for future videos and live streams I do on the channel. And also, again, share it with a friend, family member, and on social media. Thank you all for watching here, and I hope everyone has a wonderful and safe rest of their Thursday out there.